for the two problems that I assigned you on homework. Glad you all did it. Good job. So long as you're here, you get it. If you're not here, then you have to do it. So let's see. The homework problem I gave you, we talked about we had four blue marbles and we had five we had five white marbles. I can't write in white because I had a white background on this, so it's not gonna work. So draw a tree diagram with a probability. Okay. So you're drawing two marbles out without replacement. So you're taking one, putting it down, not putting it back in, and then taking another one out. Make sense? Okay. So I have a total of nine marbles. The black marble versus the white marble. The black marble are five and nine probability on the first choice. The blue marble is four and nine probability. And then to continue our tree diagram, being that we're not replacing it, these are the choices that can happen on our second guess. Does this make sense how I've had it? So we're just doing our choices. So because we're not replacing the marble, all of these denominators are going to be 8. Is that okay? So they didn't put it back? All right. So if I chose a black marble and I choose another black marble, how many black marbles were left on the second choice? If I didn't replace it, if I took one black marble out and put it here, how many are left? Yeah. Oh, black. Oh, wait. That should have been a four, right? That should have been a four, and that should have been a five. I'm sorry, I went backwards. I didn't mean that. So there should be three. How many white marbles would be left if I chose a black marble out originally? And then if I chose a white marble first, how many black marbles would be left? Four. If I chose a white marble, how many white marbles would be left? Okay. So then what you do is you multiply the fractions. So 4 times 3 is 12. 9 times 8 is 72. You do not have to reduce these fractions. That's giving me 20 over 72. That's going to give me 20 over 72. And that's going to give me 20 over 72. Does everyone feel okay with that? So... 12 plus 20 plus 20 plus 20 should equal 72. And I believe it does. Okay? So then we want to know what was the probability that both were blue. So I pulled a blue and a blue out. So you look for the blue track. We had blue and white, blue and white. Okay. So blue and a blue goes here and here, which means this is the probability. I'm pulling a blue and a blue. Okay? Pull in both white, white and white is here to here, so this is the probability. And then find the odds of each situation. So how did we find the odds? Was the probability it did over the probability of not black and black? You could, you could choose a black marble but the other one couldn't be black. So you have 12 over 72 divided by 60 over 72, which is going to give me 12 over 60. So that's the odds. And remember, the odds work in order to, do, to choose a fair game. So if you bet $12 to win 60, that's a fair game. That means the odds are in your favor. And then the probability of doing a white and a white a white and a white was a 20 out of 72 over a 52 over 72, which is going to give me a 20 out of 52. So then, again, if you wanted to choose a fair game, you'd bet 20 to win 52. But we talked about yesterday. Uh, excuse me, I need some fresher air. Uh, so we talked about yesterday that I think there was the one we talked about where there was the raffle. And I, we said bet five to win 100. A lot of times in a raffle, they think, oh, this is going to be great. We're going to make money. But the organization didn't put the odds in their favor. They put the odds in the player's favor. Now I'm telling you, my friends, 
there are so many times that there is some sort of raffle that's going to be taking place or some sort of game taking place at some sort of charity event. Now, I don't believe in stealing from charity. A lot of times I will let the charity events know if this is taking place. You realize that you're not making a winning situation. No, no, we are. So, friends, if you decide to you're working for some shelter or something like that and you're trying to raise money for something, make sure you put the odds in your favor. Don't if the if the odds if the odds the true odds were something like five to seventy, do not do a don't do a payout. Don't do a payout of five to a hundred. Okay, you're gonna lose money. Now, how when we talk about that raffle, let's say you are making a mistake and you're at a thing and it's you're like, oh no, we used markers on the board. Oh no. How could you change the game to allow it not to be in your favor or to be to go against the player's favor? Well, you could do one of two things. You can increase this. Or you can decrease this. Okay? So if it was a 5 out of 70 in your favor and you decided to say, uh, let's do a bet 10 to win 70, now you've just changed it in your favor because you're betting a higher amount for a payout. But if, it, if the true payout was five, win 5 to win 70, if you changed it to bet 10 to win 70, you're doubling what you're taking in versus what you're paying out. Don't double them both. Don't go say, oh, bet 10 to win 140 because you just didn't change that. So make the odds. This would be house favor. And that's what you want to do. Okay? Now, let's, uh, let's talk about that a little bit. And I know we talked about the game of craps. So these are two numbers in the game of craps that people feel safe to bet on. Okay? The reason they feel safe to bet on is you have more outcomes of this taking place. So if I were to do a die, so die one, you have six outcomes. And then die two would also have six outcomes, two, three, four, five, six. So you'd have this on each of these branches. Two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, you're so nice and neat sharp on your writing. I know. So the probability of rolling a six or an eight, you could roll a one and a five. You could roll a two and a four, and you could roll a three and a three. So it doesn't matter which, which die it is. So in this order, there are six ways, or six out of 36 ways, or one in six ways to win. Okay, so if you were at a table in Vegas and said bet a dollar on a six to win six, the, ta the, the odds aren't in your favor. What they do in Vegas is this. This is the Vegas payout. Okay, so actually, let me change the odds. So this should change to 5 over 6. So your odds are truly 1 in 5. So bet 1 to win 5. The Vegas payouts is they do this. Bet 6 to win 8, which is basically bet 3 to win 4. Which is bigger? 1 out of 5? Or 5 out of... Or 1 out of 5? As a decimal is 0.2 or 3 over to 4, which is 0.75. So this might be an easier way to look at it. So this is the fair game. The fair game, basically, you're looking at 0.2. The unfair game is 0.75. Okay? Again, they're, they're looking at this. They're looking at 
they're looking at an unfair payout that's going to go against what you wanted to do. So we're going to play a little bit more with tree diagrams. And I want to go back to, let's go to, um, let's go to something that we know. You all have your phones, because I can see they're in your hands. Will somebody Oops, I don't want that. Look for me. Look for me. What is the chance that a false positive comes up on a COVID test? Just Google it real quick. Just type in what's the probability of a false positive on a COVID test? A false positive means you tested, it showed you have a positive for having COVID, but you don't have it. You're not sick. 20%? Ooh. Do what? With a range of 0 to 30%? Okay. So let's keep the 20%. I like that. Okay. Will you look at the false negative for COVID? Same idea. Oh, wait, I think 20% false negative. Oh, okay. What's the false? So a false negative means you got the test, you showed that you didn't have COVID, but you really did. Do we have a false positive we can find? <sighs> okay. Now the rate of false negative according to health.harvard uh, depends on how long the infection has been present. False negative rate is 20% of the testing are performed on okay. a day. The false positive rate uh, should be close to zero. I'm trying to think of the first. Okay, let's see if we can find one. Let's see. Let's see if I can go fast. Let's see if I can go fast. Well, keep that information sequestered as to not spill. Oh, here we go. Uh, you got 30%? I just found that too. Okay, so a false positive for COVID is 30%. The correct would be 70%. False negative, where the correct would be 80%. Okay, so is it a good test? So let's talk. Let's just talk. Do you think? Do you think if you were to have a hundred tests, or 30 of them? Could show the wrong result, or 70 would show the right result, or for the false negative with 100 tests, 20 would show the wrong result, and 80% would show the right result. What do you think? I mean, just I, I'm not asking you to do the statistics on it. What do you just all think as just people? They just still have a presence of what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. So some sort of some sort of marker. So or a protein, I think, is what they're looking for. So 
You think they'd be good tests or not? Now, if you were to take a med medication, and and, and it's uh, yeah. I mean, to be fair, if a vaccine works at eighty percent of the time, that's still be eliminating the COVID virus in some time. So yeah, it's probably okay. I like it. I like it. Okay. We'll be lucky that it works ninety-eight percent. It's kind of like this is the only way to know what they need to do. Yeah, yo, yeah. Now, where does your number? I mean, I realize if you have, you know, God forbid anyone comes down with cancer, if you have an 80% survival rate, you feel pretty good about it because you want to focus on new positive things. But let's say you have a really rare form of cancer, which is really aggressive, and they give you a 30% chance. Of surviving. Do you want to focus on 30% chance of that that you're going to survive, or are you going to dwell on the 70% chance that you won't? I don't know. I mean, it just it really depends upon the person, and I guess it depends upon how someone's going to live life. Um, the tests on COVID, the tests themselves on COVID seem to be pretty good. So let's let's look at. Should we do a false positive or what's what's worse that you were tested and you had it and you came back that you didn't or is it better that you tested and you I, I think the false negative might be a better scenario to take place okay you want to do false positive okay let's do false positive so let's just do a tree diagram so Three and ten is thirty percent. Yes. Seven and ten is seventy percent. Agree. Okay. So, if you went and got a test and you're feeling fine, would you just go get one of those Q-tips shoved up your nose? And I don't know how many of the tests you all had. I know that some they did a like real, just barely inside my nose, and then there were some where I felt like they were hitting my brain almost. Right. You're tearing up and whatever. So, what are you going to do if if this takes place? And I know some of you have been quarantined. What are you going to do if you're sitting there feeling fine and you get this test? What do you think you as a person would do? You'd probably go get another test, right? So you're going to go get yourself another test. So that means that 9 out of 100 is the probability that you get a second false positive. You have a uh, 21 out of 100. If you had a false positive and you went in, these are the probabilities that, so this would be that you do have it. Here would be 21 out of 100. That you got a false positive, that you have COVID. And this would be pretty sure you're feeling pretty good about yourself. So this is a nope. So, could a false positive happen twice? Yeah, it means you have a 9% chance that you have COVID. If you tested a false positive first and then you tested that you didn't have it, you have a 21% chance that you actually have it for that happening. False positive, you might you do have it, but you don't. False positive, okay, hang on, let me, this is twisting in my head. False positive. So, you don't have COVID, so you don't have COVID, you, but you tested positive. Yes. Yeah. So there's a, a nine percent chance you had the positive twice and you still don't have it. Yeah, because I mean so when you start looking at this, 
if you got two false positives in a row, by their data that they're saying, we still have a 9% chance that we actually have it. Well, I don't know. I don't know how much further they can dig in my nose to find something. I mean, I'd leave them a booger if I could, but they don't want that. Wow. I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of unknowns in this whole thing. Agree? Yeah, we've heard people who have got something forwarded on Snapchat that say, I'm not, I don't have, or I don't want to get, or, I mean, we're living that. We live that big time. There are universities out there that are saying, we want everyone to be vaccinated before they come back. And I hear a lot of people saying, oh, they shouldn't do that. I, I mean, it's, it's a really, it's a real life situation. We are living, we are living statistics right now. Now, I know that some of you have gone and gotten the vaccine and some of you are on the second vaccine and some of you might feel like dirt after your second one. I sure did. The scary thing is I got my second vaccine and I was sick for eight days. So they think that I caught COVID around the same time I got my second vaccine. Not that my second vaccine gave me COVID, but they think I had COVID right in it. And then they got the second vaccine before I wasn't showing the effects of COVID. So friends, let me ask you this. So this is, this is me as the example. I had all kinds of tests for COVID. And they said, no. Okay, so February was the last test I had. March, if I could spell March, is when I got my second shot. I didn't go get tested for COVID after my first one because it's very possible those markers they were looking for on my vaccine would have shown, oh, you have the antibodies, which maybe they're checking for the antibodies. I don't know exactly what those tests are te you know, taste, take, looking for. I mean, I want to trust the science. I do. You know, it, it's not just someone who's, who's developing these tests who is, you know, done very poorly in algebra one, you know, for six years in a row. You know, you got people with PhDs in research and development that are doing it. So, what was the chance that I had COVID? And the thing is, they don't know. They don't know. So that's a that's a me personal real statistics. I know how badly I felt. But with the strange thing with all my symptoms is. I would go to bed 10 p.m., wake up at 5, and I felt fine. And I was fine until 4 p.m. And then from 4 p.m. until I went to bed, I felt like dookie. But then I'd wake up the next morning, and I felt fine. So is there a chance I had COVID? I don't know. Because I've talked to some people who, who have had COVID and they felt like dirt all day long. And I know some people who tested positive for COVID and they felt like dirt for about 20 minutes and then they felt fine. And I kid you not, these are actual real data I got. So what's the real statistics? And the thing is, they don't know. Now, Let's say, let's say, let's go to the herd immunity. Okay, we've all heard about the herd immunity. Okay, and everyone is a, a professional on this because you read something. Okay. Now, I've heard that they want at least 70%, and they think between 70 and 90% would get us at herd immunity. So let's talk about what herd immunity really is. The majority of people have gotten, that are my age, 
got the smallpox vaccine. In fact, I remember when I was in kindergarten, they went, so we're talking 1975, okay? They wanted to give everybody the booster for smallpox. And it wasn't really a choice. I don't remember, you know, I was five at the time. I was lucky that I had the same color shoes on, on each foot. I was lucky that I didn't have my zipper pulled down. I mean, I, I, I couldn't dress myself. I was, I was just a dumb kid. You all are smart kids, I know that, but I was a dumb kid. Um, but they basically said, okay, everybody get up. We got up. We walked down to the cafeteria, and we got in the line. And there was two choices. They were going to use either the air gun or the needle. Well, oh, <laughs> I have no idea. So this is how the air gun worked. They basically blasted your arm with a high amount of pressure in a small little pinprick of a thing, which basically which basically separated the skin just a little tiny bit. You had no idea. It just felt like you had cold air blowing on your arm. So when as you walk up, you get the shot. I mean, the air gun people were real quick. It was like, I mean, they don't have to change anything on the air gun because it's not touching you. It's getting like half an inch or whatever, whatever the measurement was from your arm, and they just pulled the little trigger and it injected a dead version of smallpox into my arm. And I remember, I mean, this is basically, this is basically what the whole thing looked like. These are all of us all lined up. And we marched in and there was somebody there that had basically a drill looking thing. That was an air gun. And then there was this other line for the needle. Now, I'm really thankful that my parents didn't decide for me to get the needle. Because the needle, when you're in kindergarten, was huge. So in the, there was like a handful of kids you see go to the needle line. You see all these kids crying because they're getting a needle. Now, there was a lot more kids that were getting the air gun than the needle, but you were watching these kids with the needle, and it was scary as a kid going, what's going on over there? They're getting a the needle. Oh, you're just getting the air gun here. And you're just watching people like, okay, that's it. And they're looking at the uncle, what was that all about? I mean, they didn't have to do an alcohol swab or anything on our arms. I have no idea. I mean, this might have been, you know, barbaric medicine. But I remember we're all, you know, walking back to class and everyone's like, what's going on my arm? That was weird. And then you get a kid coming with a smiley face band-aid and they're all red eyes because they've been crying like crazy because they got a shot. And I just remember kids saying, yeah, the air goes other people. Go, oh, the needle hurt. And it's like, I'm glad I didn't get the needle. Did it prevent me from getting smallpox? Well, I, I don't ever recall having smallpox. But that was 1975, okay? That was a long time ago that this took place. I don't remember the discussions. There was no discussion with me at home other than there was paperwork that we all went home with, I think. And then we went back to school. And I know that between myself and my network of friends, we had no idea. We just went and got the air gun which basically looked like a drill that blew air into your arm. But from 75 till about 1995, there was zero cases worldwide of smallpox. Okay, you're talking 20 years. There was nobody that had reported any cases of it. Does that sound like a good thing? I mean, smallpox, yeah. Can you survive it? Yes. Do you want to have it? No. So for 20 years, it was gone. 
something happened after 1995. Well, one, they stopped vaccinating people for it. Do any of you have the smallpox mark on your arm? You would know if you do. Okay, mine, I don't know if you can even see it anymore. Yeah, that little tiny, really beige area is where I got my smallpox vaccine. Okay, some people have actual indentation in their arm where it took place. It looks like a birthmark. So if you, if you go home, ask your parents, let me see your arm either your left or your right. Chances are your parents have a small little indentation or a little discoloration of their skin where the smallpox shot was given. So what happened in 1995? Well, we stopped giving it. We stopped giving it and other countries started not giving it. But what happened was, if you go back a little bit, there was more countries that stopped giving it before 95 because the government had fallen and there wasn't government programs in place. Yeah. They stopped using the air gun because if you lose, they can cut your arm. <laughs> I didn't know that. They gave it to a bunch of kindergartners, man. And there was like, there was a bunch of blood borne from the kids. Yeah, clean properly. Well, as I said, they didn't wipe us. They just, yeah. do, do, do. I mean, was, seriously, if I were to line you all up with the air gun back in the day, it was like. The military. Yeah, the mil it was a big thing for the military because it was, you could vaccinate very quickly with very little to, like, you know, prep work. Here, here's your gun. Okay. And it was loaded with a whole bunch of drugs. Yeah. You got it. It's in the book. Oh, I will put it in for you in a bit. <laughs> so, so my my point is, so you you looked up on, did you just look that up on the air gun? Oh, cool. Yeah, I, I always wonder what happened to it. I didn't know. Uh-oh. Uh, I hope I would know I have, have had hepatitis since then. <laughs> Oh, jeez, man. <laughs> Woo! Maybe I should have got the needle. Maybe it would have been worth the tears and everyone making fun of the people crying. <laughs> I just remember when we were walking through the line, a girl named Monica Thomas. I still, I don't know how I remember her name. She was in front of me, and I remember she, she did this when she got the hair gun. Woo! And just kept walking, and I was like, I was next. So I'm like, I didn't have the same reaction. So. Just kind of funny. So, so smallpox does now exist back in the on the planet. It is something that ha will happen. Is there major outbreaks that we have to worry about at this point in time? No. Where you would start seeing smallpox coming out, the unfortunate thing is, it is a biochemical weapon. So unfortunately, there are governments that have it that realize that we could release this and people could get it. And that would be a really bad thing. Now, I've heard, and I'm sure you've heard as well, that COVID was born in a lab and it was released on accident. It was also some guy was eating at, ate a soup that had bat in it and he got it. But I, I have no idea where it would have come from. Will we ever know what the truth about it would be? Yeah, I don't know what the truth is. I know that they'll probably have documentaries on it. Any of the conspiracy shows that I watch, 10 years from now, there'll be a conspiracy show about COVID. Okay? And you know me. I love conspiracies just as much as the next person. Okay. So, let's see. Um, I'm trying to look for an example that would be a fun one for us to play with. 
All right, so this is going to be another tree diagram problem for you to fiddle with. And we'll put it in the book. Let's see, go here. Go here. Oops, 10. suit and then find the odds on both. You understand the problem? Two cards are drawn from a standard deck of cards. Okay? And then we're not replacing. So pull one, you put it aside. Now there's 51 cards. Pull another. What's the probability both are red? And then what are the probability both are the same suit? And then find me the odds on both. And that's what we will look at for tomorrow. Sound good?